And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're going on an adventure all around on some magic carpets. We're going to be subduing some creatures, seeing some peaceful dragons. We're talking about Fantastica here. This is a two to four player deck building game. For It takes about 45 to 60 minutes. This is the Rucksack Edition, which essentially means it's been re-released by Eagle Griffin Games. The original game was uh, had full board, lots of cards. This, this scaled down the amount of cards, scaled down the, took the board out that you could really play without. Um, and just made it more accessible at a lower price point, but still keeping the high quality components. Let's take a look, I'll show you how it's played. See you on the other side. Fantastica, you're going to be going around adventuring and subduing creatures and trying to complete quests. Some of them are going to be open information for people. Some of them you'll have on your own side that, that uh, is just for you. What you're trying to do is get a certain amount of quest points completed. For example, in a two-player game, you're trying to get 10 points of 10 quest points for a medium game. Now, there's different amount of points for a different amount of players, and for a short, medium, or long game, you get to set that as you get the game started. Now each player gets a little player standy that they'll put out on the board. They have a play card. They have a deck, starting deck that they start with. And then we have some, some tokens here. We'll talk about what these do later. They get three gems and they will draft out a goal for themselves and an artifact card that gets special abilities. We'll talk about those later. Let's show you how a turn works. Now at the beginning of your turn, you'll actually have five cards from your own deck in your hand. Now these cards have certain things on them. These are starter cards. You can tell that by the little symbol there. But each of them are going to be something that you can use to go adventuring. We have a toothbrush, uh, let's see, a cat tooth there, we have a net, and we have the peaceful dragon that does nothing but sips tea. He just clogs up your deck and a spatula, let's say. So let's talk about the three different things I could do with these cards here. So let's say I started right here. One of the three things you can do is go adventuring. When you go adventuring, I can move from here to any of the adjacent uh, places, assuming I can subdue the monster or creature that's there. For example, if I want to subdue the baby dragon, it is subdued by a sword. So if I had a sword, or a spatula as they call it, in my deck, which I do, I could use it and uh, put that in my discard pile and I would be able to collect this baby dragon. So let's say I do that. I would essentially put my spatula in my discard pile. I would be able to cross over here. I'd collect the gem that's here because I subdued the character. I would put this in my discard pile as well. And I would move to this next place here. Now that I'm here, I remember I still have one of these cat teeth here and that's what subdues the spider. So I could continue to keep adventuring. You can play as many cards as you want or you can. So I would put this in my discard pile. I would collect the gem. This would go in my discard pile because I subdued it and then I would move over here to the next one. And there's another baby dragon that needs a spatula. I don't have another spatula and I couldn't subdue anybody else. So I'll just stop and that would be the end of my turn. Now at the end of your turn, you can uh, discard any cards that you don't want into your discard pile. And then you're going to drop back up so you have five. So let's say here's my discard pile. Here's my draw pile. And if I was in the same spot as an opponent, I could put a card on their discard pile. Like the Peaceful Dragon, for example, to clog up their deck. So let's say, now let's just say I'll get rid of this and then I'll draw back up to five and I can think about what I'm going to be doing on my next turn, then it'll be the next player's turn. So that's one thing you can do is going adventuring. Now, after the, at the end of my turn, this creature deck would refill the places that I subdued, and if there's any gems for them, they would do that. We'll talk about what gems do later, but essentially the creatures get refilled for the next player. Also notice that the two creatures that I subdued, they also tell me what those are going to be able to be used for to subdue other creatures later on. And sometimes as they, the monsters get harder, at the beginning of the game, the monsters are pretty easy. But towards the end of the game, they start to get a lot harder where you'll have to get multiple things, but they give you multiple things. Uh, so the monsters start easy, but they get harder as things go on and things like that. So other than going adventuring, a, a, a different thing you could do on your turn, again, you only get to do one of these things, is, is visit a statue. There's three different statues. These two are basically the Beast Bazaar. These two are basically the quests, and these are the artifact towers. If you're in a spot like here or here with one of those things, you could visit that one. So for example, if this player for his turn wanted to get some more quests, he could visit this statue. Now when you visit a statue, you actually can do one of three things. 
The first thing is you can draw three cards from that deck. So for instance, we could draw three more new quests. Now when pulling quests, you have to keep at least one of them. And these show you how hard they are and how many points. This one would get you three quest points and two gems if you finish this. And uh, we'll talk about how you finish quests here in just a moment. Uh, so there's different difficulties. You have to keep one, but you, can know, you can't have more than three uh, out in front of you at a time. If I was at the Beast Bazaar and I decided to go to the statue, I'd draw three cards from the Beast Bazaar deck. And all of these cost three gems. So you wonder what we do with those gems. You could spend three of them to get one of these cards here. And they typically are, are good. They're giving you a lot of things to subdue with. And they have some special abilities too that we'll go, go over later. And when you draw these, you can actually, uh, you could buy as many as you want or can afford as well. And if you're at the Artifact Tower and you wanted to draw from that deck, you'd draw three cards from the Artifact Tower. And you could buy these. This one's worth two, this one's worth three gems, and they do they give you special abilities. Now these will end up, both these and, and the beast cards if you buy them, go right to your discard pile, so they'll come in your deck later. But this would allow you to teleport to a region whose statue matches the one in your region, so you could go to a different place without having to subdue people. Some will allow you to draw extra cards, they just sort of break the rules of the game. Now when you add a statue, you don't have to visit one and grab cards. While you're at a statue, uh, if that's gonna be your action is going to the statue, you can actually get rid of any card from your hand or your discard pile completely from the game up to three of them for one gem so you can spend a gem to get rid of the weaker cards towards you know the middle of the end game to to, to make your deck a little bit stronger and the last option if you're visiting a statue for your turn is you can teleport so i'm at the beast i could go to the other beast and that's my turn so that's it so we talk about adventuring and uh going uh, to the statue the last thing you can do is complete a quest here i need two buckets of water let's say i had two buckets of water i could play these in there and I basically get this, I would get three gems and I'd have one quest point and I would put this face down on my play card so that people know I've completed this but they don't know how many points I have unless they're remembering. You can look at any time you want. Remember, we're trying to get 10. Now remember there's some open quests that everybody can be working on as well. For example, um, if you have uh, three wands here, uh, you could put those in there. You'd get three quest points and all the open quests have a plus one. So you'd be able to take this, you'd get two gems, three, four points. And this would go into your... Uh, your your your, uh, your play card as well and then at the end of your turn when you're done a new quest would come out and a new plus one because all the open quests get plus one that's how you complete a quest so you're either going adventuring you're visiting a statue or you're completing a quest in general now there are a bunch of free actions that you can do on your turn at any time one of those things is you can start adding cards towards your quest this is my personal quest and because it's personal i could put this card under here and so everybody else can see I'm almost done with this. And you could do this with as many cards uh, as you want to try to get towards this quest here. You could also do that for the open quest. This one needs uh, two teeth there. I could put as many cards as I want. This is one that has a tooth. I would put it face down underneath this little icon here. This says that I'm going for, this is for the quests that are open, but you can't put more than five cards here at a time. Uh, I could take cards from here out and put it in my discard pile as well. But those are sort of free actions going towards quests. You could use one of these tokens. You could use these tokens. Now, the magic carpet allows you to fly over an animal that you could not uh, subdue. So, if I wanted to go to the hills, but I didn't have the two fires to subdue them, I could spend that token and move there anyway. You could turn this into shuffle. You basically put your discards with your regular deck, shuffle it up, and draw a new deck. It allows you to get through your deck faster. Some cards have special actions, so instead of using it for water, you can use it for a special action. For example, this one allows you to draw or release one extra card in a statue, where we talked about getting rid of cards out of the game, paying a gem. Some of them will have a gem, allows you to click one. Some of them allows you to get a peaceful dragon and put it in an opponent's discard pile. It, it, it mucks up their deck. Some of them allow you to use it as a flying carpet. Some of them allow you to visit a statue as a free action. So, so you can play those as special actions as well. And of course you have the special actions of some of those artifact cards as well. So those are all the things you can do. And you're trying to do all that and get 10 quest points and actually any quests that you have not completed that, that you have in front of you are minus points. So you have to be able to be uh, above 10 um, with positive points in order to end the game there. And the first person to do that is the winner. All right, there's Fantastica. Um, now, I typically am not a fan of fantasy themes, and I'm typically not a fan of deck builders. Of course, just recently, Baseball Highlights 2045 is the first deck builder I absolutely fell in love with. You can see it uh, actually right behind me right there. Um, but so, but I've heard so many good things about this game, I wanted to try it. Um, so a couple things, if you've played Fantastica before or if not. So if you have played Fantastica before, I think that this brings it to a you know a more reasonable price point that the masses can get into 
but still didn't really take anything away because even though there's less cards and there's no board, it doesn't really take anything away from the big deluxe edition that came out that I think was over $70 or somewhere in that range. Um, now as the game itself, I, I actually liked it as a deck builder. I think it gave you a lot of good choices to make. Um, again, I'm not really that into, into fantasy, but that's just a personal thing. If you're into fantasy or you're into deck builders or both, this is gonna be one that you're gonna wanna check out. Uh, I like um, the idea that, that even though there's only three major things you can do on your turn, you know, if you pick the statue, there's three choices you get for that. So there's actually a lot more going on than it really appears to it at the first, at the beginning. I like the fact that you have those open goals that everyone can try to go after and that while you're going after them, you can put those cards down, face down, so people don't know what you're playing. They don't know which goal you're going after. Um, but, and you can also slide those on You have personal goals too. So I like that good amount of hidden information. I like trying to figure out, well, which, you know, uh, which monsters should I try to subdue because I really need that in my deck for later. I like the ideas of going to the different places and in buying these artifacts that allow to give you special abilities. Um, you know, I, I like the, the getting the creatures that were you just buy them and you put them in your deck and they're better for later. I like how the deck uh, of creatures gets harder as the game goes on. So it kind of has this little ramping as, as, as you get better and you get more cards. Boom, here come the better cards. You can disc. I like that you can completely discard cards out of your deck by paying those gems. So there's a lot of things I liked about this. There's a more going on than I thought there would be in this game because it seems so simple when you read what three things you can do in your tournament, then it turns into more. So if you're looking for a, a medium depth, good weight deck building game that has a fancy theme that moves around, this one might be for you. Uh, I'm still on the fence about deck building in general. There's the, just that, you know, baseball game just blew my mind. Um, and, and, and so uh, it's just a personal thing. I don't love deck builders, but this is a solid one. I can definitely see that from the mechanics and the design standpoint and the, the, the theming of it and stuff that this is going to be popular for people that like those types of things. Hopefully I've shown you enough to see if it's for you. That's Fantastica. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.